women inclusion the need for gender equality in national leadership just early this week for the first time in the history of the world a woman became the first president of a new republic i'm talking about dame sandra prunile mensi who served previously as the eighth governor general of barbados under the british monarch and head of state her majesty queen elizabeth ii on the 30th of November 2021, Barbados became a republic of its own, and Dame Sandra Mason became her first president. Looking at the big picture critically, we can see that a woman passed on authority to another woman, who in turn is saddled with the responsibility of leading her country and nation into the future. How lovely and encouraging this is to emerging women leaders around the globe. It is imperative that women and men should be given equal opportunities in the key decision-making rules in national affairs. The world as it is has gone beyond the constraints of parochial sentiments of patriarchy, where one gender is seen as superior and more efficient than the other. Studies and experiences have debunked the erroneous ideologies of one gender being more intellectually capable than the other. For a more progressive functional political and leadership environment, gender equality mainstreaming should be implemented. Despite the propaganda for the need of gender equality in key leadership position, Africa countries are still at the corridors of gender equality mainstreaming, since traditional beliefs and unprogressively minds are still at the hems of affairs. These misogynistic practices, if not checked, will continue the atrocities of recycled leadership and devalue the need for progressive approach to sustainability. In order to curb discriminatory policies and promote true leadership over biased and patriarchal ideologies, women and men should be given a fair share on issues that has to do with state leadership, which could play an important role in projecting meaningful national and foreign policies. More so, we can't talk about women participating in leadership and decision making without addressing issues like quality education for girl child. Countries or territories that have been forced by violent religious extremism from majorly insurgent groups like Boko Haram, ISWAP, Taliban, tend to have regular occurrences of girls being abducted and prevented from schools and mostly forced into marriages. GBV, domestic violence against women should be addressed legally, not necessarily domestically. Effective policies should be put in place to encourage women effective participation in leadership and governance. In conclusion, an educated woman can make quality decisions and express leadership both in her household, her nation, and even the world at large. So, Juliet, let me through this. Uh, the floor is open to the two ladies here. Juliet, we like to see you to run for president of Nigeria. Why Anne? Anne is going to run for president of Kenya. I to wait to see what you guys will say before I speak. <laughs> but, I mean, it's so enthralling. It's so interesting to see that a man has this belief. Because we think so as well as women. We think we are as good, sometimes better than you guys. Absolutely. But from what you have said, some organizations and some countries have actually implemented this structure of including women in leadership, in governance, and all of that. But what I see most of the time is like it's more lip service than really actual positive intention. And I will explain. So we look for a woman that is very submissive that we can control, that is like a figurehead, <laughs> and just put her in on the board, <coughs> if it's a company, or put her in government as VP, vice president, vice <laughs> governor, and just say, oh, we have a woman there. And the woman has no clue Power. as to the governance of what is going on in that organization or in that country. So that's what we have seen. And that is one of the reasons you now come up and still say women are not effective. Mm. Because you also did not put the best woman in that position in the first place. So it's fine that we have this awareness. Some companies actually have it as policies, like my organization, to have women in management. So we have women in our ESCOM, in our executive committee, in our directorship. However, what we need to do further is to ensure that the best fit, whether male or female, is put up for the job. And that's where the efficiency will come. I'll tell you why. We all have different skill sets. Mm -hmm. But our gender now makes it easier 
for one gender to have a particular skill set that your dad doesn't normally have. Like, like we have, we are naturally, we have this maternal yeah. instinct that comes yeah. natural to us. Yeah. Exactly. We are patient. Yeah. Exactly. And it comes to, do we have hormones? The hormones can be positive and negative. You guys don't have the hormonal issue. <laughs> but if we can bring those things to governance <laughs> in a positive way, it will bring about growth, to bring about progress, it will bring about prosperity, and it will be good for both the male. Female. So that's my advice. I do all that life. Wow. Uh, absolutely. Sex. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, I'll just say two things very quickly. The first thing is, I mean, I have a wife and two girls, so I'm already, you know, uh, outnumbered. <laughs> right? So I have no choice than to ensure yeah, that trouble. my daughter becomes, you know, president someday. But oh, wow. jokes aside, one of the things that actually people think work against women that they actually have going on for them, the hormones you talked about, emotions. Now, you hear a lot of talk about emotional intelligence. And women naturally carry those traits of emotions. It's just being able to channel it properly, right? That's on one hand. On the other hand, you know, um, I have friends that work in banks, and they said that when women are head of operations, more often than not, they thrive better than men in those roles. So you saw that men, women naturally are better managers because they're at home, they're managing your money, they're managing the children, they're managing you, you know. They say women are the, you know, the mothers of the home. So... A lot of times women have these, yeah, nurturing abilities, management abilities, emotional, you know, strength, of more than not, that we think is a weakness, can be channeled into a strength. Because emotional intelligence is everything. Now everybody's talking about, you know, EQ, you know, versus IQ. So I feel that women have all the strengths that need to be channeled, and they should definitely be given a chance, you know, um, a lot of times. I, yeah, I right. think, yeah. Speaking like about things. emotions, Victor, before you come in, I want to just chip in something that looks more like a joke. Remember those days at our secondary school? At the military secondary school, we had the commandant, usually a lieutenant colonel at that time, mm -hmm. handling the role. So there's this particular female teacher that also assumed leadership. So we refer to her as Mamandant. <laughs> the commandant was a man, she was Mamandant. Right. So people want to say about emotional intelligence. So, you know, until we fix the... Um, until we fix it's a man's world, and until we fix politics is not for the weak-hearted, and that women are weak. Now, it would be hard for us to you know, correct the disempowered beliefs that they have sold to us. But it would be easier for us to begin to build a new cadre, a new generation of people, both men and women, right, who can be, begin to accord equal rights, equity. I said that, you know, sometimes on set, give the best man the job. By man, I mean either male or female. Give the best person the job. Not so why don't you just right give the best woman the job? And I mean, let, it, let it mean male or female. That's part kind of the problem, right? So, so that's a super... So, so you see, yeah, give the best woman. That's, so you yeah. see, programming is this, yeah, it's a program. Yeah. I, I just think that lots of things are just programmed. Right. And we cannot really... We can't intercept the program at, with these old chaps. When I mean old chaps, you know what I'm talking about. We can't intercept it. But we can go back to say, guys, let's sell you a new program. Once we can sell new programs, then we can create a new outcome, new results, and all of that. I think let's begin to let's begin doing the work, yeah. right? Anyway, with, the, with the way you are speaking, I don't know whether I will call you a software engineer or a life coach. <laughs> but in any case, uh, we need to reprogram the societal mindset <laughs> to ensure and respect everyone. Women and men have, should have equal opportunity, equal access to uh, opportunities, governments, position, management, position, business, or whatever. So up next is Victor after the break.